music theory lesson number eight. So today we're going to be talking about um, semitones and sharps and flats and naturals. I got them kind of, it's kind of a little conundrum we've gotten ourselves into here. We have sharps and flats and naturals, which are kind of to do with semitones and whole tones. And then I wanted to teach more on semitones, but you, to know how to do more with that, you actually have to learn with sharps and flats and naturals first. So, what I'm going to do is first explain an extremely basic intro of what um, a semitone is and a whole tone. Then from there, then I'm going to show you uh, sharps, flats, and naturals in this lesson. In the next lesson, I'm going to show you the more advanced versions or variants of semitones and uh, give you the background on it. So, that's basically the idea here with this, uh, <laughs> this plan. So, the first thing I'm going to do actually is explain it and then I'm going to give you a practical demonstration of what semitones uh, sound like. So uh, let's get going with that. Okay, so first thing we're going to learn is the kind of theoretical easy version of uh, what a semitone is. Okay, so what is a semitone? A semitone is actually uh, t the closest two notes can be together in Western music. Like in other music, so you'll use quarter tones and other things like that, but don't even worry about that. So basically in all popular music or mainstream music that we have, the two closest notes that they can ever be together is called a semitone. So um, a semitone is very, very close. It's like na, 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 na. It's very, very close and uh, the way it sounds. Like the pitch is very, very similar. So the frequency number is actually very similar. It's very close. That's basically what it's saying. Like, you know how all pitches or notes or frequencies? Well, the number is very close to the other number. So the vibration uh, is very, very similar. So it's, it's close, but it's like it's the closest that will put two notes together. So why this is actually an important concept is it's basically something that's very fundamental to music. Since it's the smallest thing, it's like what everything else is built on. It's a very big foundation to uh, all of music, like scales and chords and everything is all built upon this principle. So it's extremely important that you understand it, okay? All right, so semitone. So a semitone is the closest two notes can be together. Now, the other important thing to understand is what is a whole tone? Okay, a whole tone is basically two semitones put together. That equals one whole tone. So. I've drawn this out here. So a semitone is right here. So think of it as the smallest amount, okay? Now if you combine two of those smallest amounts together, you get the whole tone, okay? So think of it like half. So half plus half equals whole. Uh, semi is one word, but you can actually sometimes call it a half tone. That's what some people call it is. They call it a half tone and a whole tone. Uh, I was taught semitone, so it's just kind of like the natural thing I say, so whenever I say it, I always say semitone. So anyway, you can do half tone if you want to though, it works totally fine either way. But okay, now let's move along here. So what I have here is I've drawn out uh, kind of like a keyboard layout. Now the purpose of this course isn't really for uh, teaching you how to play piano, I already have another video series on that. But why I have this drawn out is because it's very, uh, just like pie charts and graphs are very easy for us to see data, you know, because when we see something laid out in front of us, we're like, oh, that makes sense, because it's very visual, right? So just think of this as a visual aid. Now, if I were you, and I was learning music theory, I'd probably want to learn at least just a tiny little basic bit of piano, because piano has all the tones laid out for it visually for you, so it's extremely easy to pick up on and it helps you a lot with your theory. So if I were you, I'd probably watch like lesson one, two, and three probably of my uh, piano lesson series, and that'll basically teach you all, just like enough to help you understand how to translate those, because it teaches you like note names, finger positions, scale, and chords and stuff like that, and just like three lessons. And I'm not trying to plug it or anything, it's just that that would actually help you. So um, I'm actually gonna have a couple uh, practical demonstrations coming up here in a minute. But first thing I want you to look at is, so there's a keyboard here. Now a semitone basically goes from one note to the very next note up. So from C to this black note. You'll see that in the practical demonstration. But this is what I would like you to draw for yourself for references because some of you probably don't have keyboards 
Plus, it's good if you're ever doing the practical theory exams. Doesn't even make sense, practical. Anyway, say you're doing a theory exam. <laughs> Oh, God, <laughs> I messed up, but it's kind of funny doing everything in one take. Um, okay, so, <laughs> so say here we have um, this, right? We're going to use that in when we're doing a theory, a uh, theory exam, or anytime you're using, you're writing down theory. It's very helpful if you're trying to think, okay, well, how, do the semi, how many semitones is this, or whatever, especially when you're doing, like, scale writing later on. But this is helpful to learn to do. So I've shown kind of how I've drawn this. So the first thing you do is you draw these four, uh, these little like black lines. So what you do is you do like one, two. Okay, put two in a row and then put one, two, three. Good, just like that. And if you're gonna keep going and you want a bigger one, then you draw another two and then draw another three, like that. Okay, so that's the grouping that you do. Next thing you do is you add little sticks. So see how I've added sticks to them? It's almost like a, you know, a corn dog thing. So here's your little stick like that. Okay, you've got your sticks. Now, you need this bracket that goes underneath. But, uh, so you go like this. And the next thing I do is I'm going to put a, a line between any group of two and three that I come to. So if I was doing that here, I'd draw the sticks like this. And I draw my thing that goes like that, and then I put a line between each group of two and three. The reason because you have a key on this side and a key on this side. And then from there, then you can name your notes. So you always start, like, I find the easiest thing to do is it's like the seven letters of the alphabet. So you find two of these, and then the one, like two of the dark, like the dark pop popsicle sticks or polo sticks or pogo or whatever you want to call it, corn dog, anything. Then you take you take your group of two and go to the very left hand side and that's always going to be C. Then you just go D, E, F, G. Then you have A, B. Then it just keeps repeating C, D, E, F, G like that. And that's how you do that. Okay. So practice writing that. And I want you to understand that a semitone and a whole tone are basically whole tone is two semitones put together. Sem and a semitone is uh, just the very next note up. Okay? So that's what I want you to understand just in this lesson, then I'll explain it and show it more in sheet music in the next lesson. Okay, now let's do the practical demonstration of what they sound like. Hey guys, alright, so another form of a semitone, like another way to look at it is, you can look at a piano, and a piano goes up this way. See how every note is going higher? But if I do this... That still sounds like it's going higher. But now when I do this, right, if I'm going from here and then I go up here, it doesn't sound like it's going in a row, does it? So, so those are all semitones. This is actually a whole tone. This is a semitone. A whole tone is basically a, uh, with a note in the middle. So it's like a sandwich. A whole tone is like... You have these two notes, and then there's a note in the middle, so it's a whole tone. So it's two semitones. Together equals one whole tone. So think of half as semi, so half plus half equals whole. So you've got half a tone, or semitone, semitone, whole tone. Semitone, semitone, whole tone. Here, what's this? This is a semitone. Semitone, semitone, whole tone. So this isn't a whole tone what this is, because it has a note in here, here, there's nothing in the middle, it's just two white notes. You get it? Okay, so it's actually quite useful to ha have a keyboard in your mind when you're doing a lot of theory stuff, so um, I'd probably suggest uh, learning a little bit of the piano lessons that I have, because I actually go over like note names and stuff like that. Even if you just watch like the first mm, like five or six videos, you'll get it, you'll gain, well actually even the first three videos, you'll have a huge understanding about the basics of piano already. Like, you'll start to be able to get around it. So I'd suggest that. Anyway, uh, that's enough for the demonstration on the piano to show you what semitones and whole tones are. Alright, so here's a semitone on an ocarina. This is an ocarina right here. So it's a wind instrument. 
Now, uh, semitones can be played on this or any other instrument, so here's a little demonstration here. See how that's a semitone? This would be a whole tone. So can you tell the difference? It's like whole tone, semitone. Now that was two semitones in a row. Now I could keep going. So you know, you can just keep going down, up and down with semitones. So that's ocarina. Now let's show another one. Hey guys, so on violin, it sort of works like this. So you can play uh, semitones on violin as well. So here would be a semitone. Now if I do a whole tone. So semitones and whole tones can be played on violin as well. Now, mind you, I'm not the best violin player in the world, that's for sure. <laughs> I'm just a noob. But yeah, so I just wanted to show you guys that um, you can definitely play um, semitones, whole tones on any instrument, like even vocals, guitar, um, uh, even drums are pitched and they can be played in semitones, although that's not very practical because that doesn't happen. But like another exa example is, um, like for violin here, if you look really closely, when you go, uh, it's hard to do a good view, but basically when you put your two fingers side by side, when you're down at the very bottom of the neck on the violin in first position, that's a semitone. But if you put basically a finger width apart, then now it is actually a, a whole tone. So it's like if you put it side by side, it's a semitone, and if you put a little gap in between, then it's a whole tone. So actually on a violin, whole tones and semitones make a lot of sense. They also make a lot of sense on guitar as well, because uh, for each fret that you have on a guitar, if you go from one fret to the next, you're actually going up a semitone. And if you go from one fret and then you skip a fret and you go to the next fret, you're actually going up a whole tone. <laughs> so there's a little uh, tip, there's a little bit of uh, information on that. Anyway, so I think that's enough uh, kind of practical demonstration. Now let's get into the theoretical demonstration of semitones. Hey guys, uh, how did you like my practical demonstration there, huh? <laughs> uh, quite interesting. The piano I think was okay, but I'm not very pro at violin. I started learning a little while ago. It's fun to play with a few different instruments, and I thought it would be kind of cool to incorporate a few different ones to show you that uh, semitones and whole tones and everything don't just apply to one instrument, they apply to every instrument. So that's why music theory is actually good, because if you learn it, it just completely transplants it to whatever instrument you feel like learning at that time. So as long as you know that you like music, music theory is a safe thing to learn. <laughs> okay. Now, uh, the next thing I wanted to show you was, now that you understand the concept of a semitone and what it is, um, I need to show you something else called um, a sharp, a flat, and a natural. So, um, oh, hold on a second. I actually wanted to color code these. Hold on. Okay, it's done. The magic of video making. Things are just done instantly. Okay, anyway. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to color code them so that you can remember them a bit easier. Okay, so now why I had to show you semitone is you'll see now because okay a flat will lower a note one semitone so it'll make it lower one semitone if you see a sharp it's going to raise it up a semitone now if you see a natural uh, it'll cancel another sharper flat so say you see you're writing something or you've seen something in music theory or like sheet music where you have a note that's flatted. And then the next note, they want it to be like just the natural note. So say it was a B flat here, and they wanted to go back to a B, then they'd write a natural sign to cancel the flat from before. Another important thing to note uh, is that sharps and flats and naturals, they're all called something called an accidental, okay? So accidentals, that refers to all of these together, they last for one measure, okay? So if you have, um, like say, you know, this happening here and you have a note here with a sharp and you have another note on the same space like that, 
that is actually going to still be a sharp. Unless, until it hits some, a, a bar line. Once it hit a, hits a bar line, then this note over here would now be a natural again. So this would be like a C if it was in treble clef. So C sharp, C sharp, C natural. So it would just be a C. Okay? So remember, C sharp is one semitone higher. So that's where this whole keyboard thing would help, because if you have a keyboard, you go on the C, and then you go, okay, it's one semitone higher, so it's this one up here. Okay? Anyway, so if you're a little confused, don't worry about it. Yeah, these are all new concepts, so you'll get it. Okay, so C sharp, C sharp, and then it goes back to C natural. So basically, imagine the sharp is flying along like a crow or something. It's like, caw, 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 caw. Ooh, I'm going to make this one sharp too. Caw, caw, caw. Oh, then it hits like a window and it's like, ah. <laughs> okay, so that's basically how the, the bars work is they'll cancel anything after it. So the sharp only applies for that whole thing. Now, if I wanted this to be a C natural here, I'd write the natural right there. And then boom, now this C sharp can't affect it. So it's like putting a window pane in front of now the crow's like, the crow's like, ka, 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 boom. Okay? And if you're wondering, this natural would affect any other notes until the end of the bar as well. Okay? So that's all accidentals last until the bar. Now, uh, I also wanted to show you guys how to, how to draw each of these things. Not that they're that very hard, but a flat goes like this. Say I had a... Uh, Okay, say I had those five lines here, so I have staff, now say I have a note right here, okay? Now a flat is going to try, you're going to try to get this B in between the space, if it's a space note. So you're going to draw a line down like this, and then you're going to bring it up, and then down to the top, bottom right there, okay? Try to keep it in that space. Now, again, if it's on a line, so you have a note on a line, then you're going to try to thread that line through that B kind of thing right there. So you bring it up like this, like that. That'd be your flat. Okay, so that's flats are very easy to draw. Now sharps. So again, if I have a note up here, now sharp, I'm going to draw one line down, another line down right beside it. Okay, and I'm usually going to bring it from that space to this space and leave the space in the middle. And now I'm going to draw another line on top, and I'm going to try to keep this underneath this line. I'm going to draw another line, and it's going to be underneath on top of that line. Okay? So that would be your sharp right there. Okay, now if it's on a, a line, you're going to try to go, so I go from space to space, and then I'm going to go, so this space to this space, and then I do another like that. And I try to keep the, uh, the line, kind of straddling that line right there, okay? And that is how you draw a sharp right there. Now to do a natural, so say I have a note here, now I'm going to go, I'm going to draw an L, so like this, so it goes down, and then it's like that, and now I'm going to draw like a 7, so it goes like this. So the 7 connects here, and then I have this box on the space, okay? So the space on the box, or the box on the space, is kind of, it's kind of like the target. So always think that each of these has a target. So like the center of this box is the target. The center of this box is a target. The center of the B right here, that's your target. Those are the targets that you want to line them up on the, the music, staff paper or whatever. So if it's on the line right here, you're gonna draw a, the L, and see how it's just below the line? And now I'm going to add this one above the line and then down. And now the box is straddling that, uh, that line right there. So that's flats, sharps, and naturals. Okay? So remember, flats go down a semitone, sharps go up a semitone. Now why have an arrow drawn left and right? Sharp flats go that way because on the piano, if you're doing the piano that is, but in general, Usually it's referred that way. Flats are this way, so left, and sharps are this way, so right. I hope that's not the same on the camera. Yeah, it should be. So left and right. Okay? So left, right. So sharps are up, flats are down. And naturals cancel. Okay? So if you can just learn that, that would be awesome. Okay, so time for homework. Homework. Yeah.
Okay, so for your homework, uh, I know this is your favorite part. <laughs> okay, the homework, what I want you to do is draw 20 sharps, 20 flats, and 20 naturals. So I would like it if you could do 10 of the ones on the line and 10 on the ones of the spaces. So basically just take your staff. Now you can purchase staff paper out uh, at a music store or even online. You just type in uh, staff paper, okay? Or you can even probably find some on the internet. It's just like blank lines. Like you just call, like look for staff paper in Google or something. And uh, then you just print out sheets of it and then you can work off that. Because you're going to have to use this a lot. Like all throughout the course you're going to be using staff paper. So draw basically, you know, a note. So you'll have your staff and draw a note on this. Just use whole notes if you want to. And then draw a sharp and then draw flats or whatever. So basically I want you to draw them on the, on the staff paper with a note. Okay, so try to draw the note in the, uh, the sharper flat on the same space or line. Be very clean about this. This is one little thing that uh, you'll get docked with uh, if you're ever writing for an exam. And if your sharp is like in another line or space, if it goes that too far or where they can't tell where it is, they will just dock you for it because they can't tell 100% sure what you're trying to write. <laughs> very mean. I know. Anyway, so... Basically what we want to do is draw those and then also if you could, which would be very helpful, is make sure that you memorize what a semitone is, what a whole tone is, and what does the sharp and flat do in natural. Okay? Remember, they go for the whole bar and then they get cancelled at the end of the bar line. Okay? So that's something to watch for because they'll do a lot of trick questions on stuff like that. Like, um, They'll write a note, and then another note, and then they'll ask you what the other note is. And then if you just look at it, you'll be like, oh, that's an F. But then there's a sharp on the other sharp, uh, the, like there's another F before that with a sharp. And then they'll be like, hit, hit, hit. And then you're like, that's an F. And then you'll fall for the trap. And then they're like, nope, that's an F sharp. Because there's an F sharp before that, and there's no bar line. And you're like, oh, no. <laughs> so anyway, so watch for that. And yeah. I think that's about it. So uh, enjoy. I hope you guys enjoyed that and found it helpful. And keep working hard. And I'm sure you guys are uh, doing well. So just keep at it. And if you do have any problems with anything, just review the lesson. Okay, take care. Bye-bye.